All right, guys, so what I'd like to do is I'm gonna try to teach you about troubleshooting. Now, troubleshooting is by far the most difficult thing to teach. It's, it's downright almost impossible. I've actually talked to other teachers and they're like, oh, it can't be taught, it has to be learned on the job. It's where that experience comes from. Well, I, and I think that's a little bit true, but I wanna to try to give you guys at least a little bit of a base level, so that way when you're building your labs, you guys can kind of be a little bit more empowered to pick up that multimeter and go ahead and troubleshoot your own stuff. And then you're gonna gain that experience just troubleshooting your own stuff. And then later down the road, um, when you actually got a job or maybe you're out there working and you're troubleshooting stuff, you're gonna remember this and you're gonna kind of use it to continue you know, building that experience up, okay? So um, most of the stuff I'm gonna talk about is really just uh, if a part was bad, like say you had a bad coil on a transformer, I'm not, I'm sorry, not on a transformer, but like on a contactor over here. So, and how to figure that out. We're gonna start, because we've only really talked about this typical motor control right here. We're, we're gonna talk about most of our troubleshooting on this. Um, I hope to have more troubleshooting videos going on, on into the class. That way you're maybe troubleshooting harder things, okay? Um, uh, like I said, most of the stuff will be is if a part was bad. Sometimes you're gonna have a problem where say you constantly are having a breaker that is popping or maybe a drive that is constantly giving you an error. Um, and that could be something that like the actual wiring is somehow getting a direct ground um, and it's causing that problem. Those are a little bit more difficult to troubleshoot and a lot of times the problem they'll have, like parts get swapped most of the time. Most of the time you'll see even veteran mechanics just swapping parts because they don't know how to fix that problem and that's a really difficult one to find, okay? So the, the purpose of trying to troubleshoot is to not do that, is to you know find the exact problem, fix it, fix it quickly, and then move on because obviously every minute that this machine is not running, it is dollars, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I wanna kinda walk through a basic four step um, plan or four step kind of work through process. It will be linked below with a lot more information, kind of I've more written out, my thoughts will be a lot more um, not so quick, not so gathered, I guess. It'll be a lot more, a lot more broad. <laughs> so the first one I would like to talk about is gather information. Now, gathering information could, is like multiple things. Say you are working on a problem that is constantly happening in your plant. Say it's something that's like, oh yeah, that broke again. Well, more than likely, somebody already knows what the problem is. They've already troubleshot it and they've already figured it out. So there's no point in you re-troubleshooting it if you can just ask around and they can kind of tell you what's wrong with it. A lot of times it, those um, CMMs, those you know, maintenance managing systems, will actually track that kind of stuff and will have like what the repair was last time. It'd be really smart to go back and look at that either one because they could have repaired something that wasn't the problem so you would need to maybe then you will you would be troubleshooting at that point if you're like well why would they why would they replace that part or maybe they replace something that you know may have got put in or installed wrong so now you're troubleshooting something that somebody else did you're actually fo following behind somebody and it could be you know faulty wiring or something really really pretty simple but just gather that information also in the gathering stage you need to really look at your um, your schematic and understand how you know how that system is supposed to be working if you don't understand how it's supposed to work or what it's supposed to be doing there's no chance that you're going to be able to go through and troubleshoot it you're just going to be swapping parts until it magically starts working again so that's what the whole purpose of this class is really about is trying to understand how this circuit works and how more difficult circuit works um and then obviously and then there's just more and more you're going to just trying to understand how the the actual system works right so you wanna gather that information too. You wanna to take a look at that schematic. If you don't know, it's time to ask some questions, okay? Um, uh, otherwise, like I said, the gathering information is gonna be a really big one. I'm gonna have some more ideas underne underneath. Um, you also might you know, employ some other troubleshooting techniques such as like infrared, um, you know, something like that to maybe troubleshoot at that time. Maybe you're just gonna gather that information. The next thing is uh, number two, understanding the mount function. So pretty much like you need to know what the problem is. And then honestly, you start getting into bigger circuits or bigger problems. You're really just trying to figure out what is not working and what is working. So let, let's say like on this circuit, which is a really basic circuit, let's say all of a sudden you press the start button and it doesn't latch. 
or it doesn't continue running. You press start button, motor runs, but it, once you release that start button, it turns right back off. Okay, you need to understand that more than likely there's something malfunctioning in your latching circuit down here. Now, if you press the button and nothing happens, well, you've either, you gotta understand that the motor coil is not getting pulled in. You can't, you can't start troubleshooting if you don't understand what's not working. So this becomes really important. Like I said, later videos, I'm hoping to have a much bigger schematic so we can talk about like how half of the circuit might be work, not working and how we need to kind of, you know, cycle in and try to find that one thing that kind of causes everything not to work or only half of it not to work, okay? The next thing is find what can be measured. Um, this one's kind of a, this one's kind of a difficult one. It's a, it kind of begins to start going into the process of elimination, which is the, you know, step number four. Honestly, you've, you've got a multimeter and what can be measured? You know, what voltage can you measure? So you're going to go through and you're going to find, you're going to start measuring to see where you have voltage more than likely. And I've got, and I've got my multimeter here and I'm hoping that I can kind of show you this. I'm just going to pull the leads off so we can talk about this a little better. What I'll do is most of the time you'll see me come over with my black lead. I will take it and I will hook it into the common side. Most of the time, what I'll do is I'll actually go to your distribution block and I'll go ahead and I'll just actually put it in one of the terminals, screw it down tight so that way it, I know I got a, a, good, um, a good hold on it and I got a good connection. And then I'm pretty much gonna take my, my other lead and I'm measuring for voltage here and I'm gonna start at the transformer and I'm gonna see that I have 24 volts here. I'm then gonna go to where my breaker is and I'm gonna see if I've got 24 volts going into my breaker. If I have 24 volts going in my breaker, I'm gonna check on it out. If I don't, if I do have 24 volts here, I know that the breaker's good. If I don't, more than likely my breaker's popped. I'm gonna flip the breaker, and if it pops again, then we're gonna to have to figure out where you have a direct ground, okay? That, otherwise, what I'm saying is, the wire here is somehow getting, making contact with this side without any, uh, any switches or anything in between it. It doesn't like that, okay? And you honestly, if a breaker wasn't there, you probably would burn up a transformer at that point. So you wanna make sure you're always installing that breaker. Um, so then after the breaker, I'm really gonna come down here and I'm gonna measure. Again, I've got my, my common is inside of some, is over here somewhere, making sure that I'm getting my other leg or my other side, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna test right here. If I have 24 volts going into the stop, I'm gonna check it on the out. Check it going into the stop, check it going out. And I'm just gonna move through the whole system, figuring out if I have power all the way to my motor control. This is how I like to do it. Technically, you could go ahead and just start right at the motor control if you've determined that the motor control is not working. You could go right to the motor control, put your, put your probe in there, and see if you've got 24 volts. If you do, then you've gotta figure out if you've got a, a good return or good ground. If you don't, um, at that point, what you would need to do, and that might be where you'd actually, I'm sorry, let me get a little ahead of myself. That might be where you take and you do a continuity test. You do a continuity test from the one side of the, ter or one side of the motor control up to your, tra your, uh, your transformer here, and you make sure you've got a good connection back to that, um, from that coil. Could be something's wrong with your overload, something like that, okay? There's, there's a couple different things that could happen there, and you need to start troubleshooting getting that experience to start understanding that. But I personally like to work through the whole problem. Again, I like to make sure that I, I'm getting, you know, roughly within one volt of what I'm supposed to be. So if I'm, if I'm measuring here and I got, you know, half of my voltage, there could be a problem. If I measure right here and I've got 12 volts, something may have malfunctioned with my transformer, okay? Something may, you know, I may have dropped a leg there. But all I'm doing at this point is I'm doing a process of elimination to eliminate what parts are good and what parts are bad, what parts are I have moving through different items, stuff like that. Um, I'm, and before, when I was you know in the basic electrical, a lot of times I took your I had to take your multimeter and I would show you if I press the button how the continuity would work or the buzzer would go off, and that's how you would test a switch. And I'm gonna I'm gonna have some videos below that are gonna talk about testing individual components to help you kind of figure that out, um, but. This, this is just kind of a base level, whole circuit, everything's together, we're trying to troubleshoot, okay? So, like I said, we're just gonna go through, we're gonna kind of figure out that we, we can measure for voltage, we know that we need to see 24 volts, and we're gonna go process of elimination, try to figure out what is not working. 
So that's, a, that's kind of a good base level troubleshooting. Just remember, gather your information, figure out how the circuit's working, what you need to know, maybe what has been done to the circuit already. A lot of times, the problems usually come up when other people fix them or when people fix them. So that's, that's where we're also gonna get into fixing something correctly, which is what the class is really about. Um, understand what's malfunctioning. So if, if um, you know, you understand that you know you, your latching circuit's not working, well, you need to go figure out if that auxiliary contact's got power going through it or if it's getting pulled in at all. Um, motor control's not working at all. Maybe you're not getting power to the motor or motor control. Um, find what can be measured and figure out, you know, where, where you should and shouldn't have power and then use a process of elimination to go through and find where, you know, where that power is flowing through there or where and where it's stopping. Okay. A lot of times, and this is really, it's really important to kind of look at the normally closed switches versus the normally open. So to test, you know, to test here, you would have to push that start button in to see that 24 volts. So you want to make sure you're doing that. Okay. Well, so I think that's probably more than long enough uh, for us to get started. Um, ultimately, if you're in my class and you haven't got your multimeter out, you haven't tried to troubleshoot by yourself, I'm not going to be very happy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk over and I'm going to make you pick up the leads and I'm going to make you troubleshoot through the process. I do not come over and troubleshoot circuits for people. Um, I want you to do that. Secondly, you want to make sure that you have those wire numbers because it's really easy to go through and actually find test points if the wires are numbered correctly, okay? So don't, don't think that we're not gonna help you, but we, I want you to try to gain that experience. I want you to try, okay? So good luck, go ahead and move on, um, and let's probably, we'll probably start building circuits here pretty quick.